I maybe just want to make uh, three little thoughts on sustainable living post COVID-19. The first is we can all support one of our fellow Commonwealth countries, Australia, in their efforts to close wet markets for wildlife worldwide and tackle the illegal wildlife trade. And I think that's also going to have huge benefits for human health and particularly in terms of future zoonotic pandemics, potentially. Second is to support wildlife conservation and when things return to some larger degree of normality, to support reputable sources and local communities who are involved in conservation. Because of course, there's been a movement towards tourism underpinning funding for conservation, and that's now gone. And that will be really important to protecting habitat and some of the world's rarest species. And finally, it's to put pressure on our leaders to suggest that we are happy with different approaches going forwards to sustainable development and growth. And this links into the question that I just mentioned at the start about air quality and water quality. While the long-term impact might be limited, what I would say is that the improvement in each of those levels, particularly uh, in terms of air quality, but in terms of water pollution, I'm thinking mainly noise pollution there, actually, in terms of boats, they can show what can be done if we act together on an issue. And I think for living in a more sustainable planet post COVID-19, both for wildlife and conservation and for the climate, that's hugely important. Indeed, uh, as we've said before, uh, there is impact on the environment uh, at the current state uh, uh, during the pandemic. It will last a bit after everything goes back to normal in quotes, uh, but it won't be lasting for long. So I believe that the situation after like, let's say this time next year, it will be anyway in our hands uh, to, to actually act apart from the two points uh, of out of three that Josh referred as his, as his closing remarks, mm -hmm. especially on the third one, um, to put political pressure into uh, political parties, governments, uh, negotiators, um, and everybody who is negotiating and taking decisions uh, for every one of us, everyone and each one of us, uh, to push them and let them understand and let them know that we want this for everybody and it is not a matter of uh, one unit, it's a matter of everybody and that all the world uh, wants to, to, this, this, to see this happening. 